Hello, Cyber World. This is Marcella Silva. Hey, Ray, great to have you here today. Thanks for joining this live interview. And basically today we're going to talk about how Ray Benito, who is my guest here, a retired U.S. Navy senior chief, has his journey towards finding financial peace of mind and independence mm -hmm. through land banking. So welcome, Ray. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you, Marcella, for, for having me. It, it's a joy. It's a, it's, it's a delight to be here. Absolutely. Especially, especially by you. <laughs> awesome. So why don't you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ray Benito. I was originally from the Philippines and uh, joined the U.S. Navy from the Philippines. I was a mechanical engineer, taught for a year, a uh, bunch of uh, mechanical engineering uh, subjects. And then uh, fast forward, I joined the U.S. Navy again from the Philippines and uh, 24 years of uh, service and uh, two highlights of my career being in the U.S. Navy is being part of two wars, uh, Iraqi Freedom, which is the, the latest that I did, but really the first war that I've been is the Desert Storm, Desert Shield. And I've uh, been married to uh, Lira Benito for uh, 22 years now. We have seven kids all together, including a special need daughter, Andrea Solomon. So, and now um, I'm into land banking business. That's me in a nutshell. Wow, seven kids. That's <laughs> that'll uh -huh. keep you busy, Ray. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, why don't you tell me what types of investments you have invested in previously, and how did those work for you? Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for asking the question. Uh, interesting. So, we're blended family. Uh, so with, uh, my wife now, Lira Benita, again, all together, seven kids, we had to do something right with seven kids. That's a big, I won't say burden because they're joy. Uh, they are, um, a responsibility and, uh, uh, more of a stewardship. So, uh, join forces with my wife. I always, we always believe in, um, diversifications of investments and growing up in the real estate industry in the Philippines, we have rentals as well. And so we thought of um, investing on rentals here in the US because I know that that helped us in, in the Philippines growing up, at least looking from a distance how my parents did their investments. I also did uh, day trading. We also uh, have uh, uh, invested in different types of index funds, uh, name it mutual funds, you know, uh, bonds and all the anything that index base. So what else we, you know, and also got involved in different types of business that we did to to generate uh, income really uh, for for our for for our family. And uh, you said, how is it working for me? Well, <laughs> how, did, how did those investments work for you? And I'm curious what kind of careers you got in, in into at that time. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, again, like I said, the background is on uh, rental properties. And at first it was very exciting, right? Say, yay, I can do what my parents have you know, done in the past. And we're so excited in the beginning and and then really looking forward to and then hoping that it will be, you know, our truly uh, source of uh, bread and butter that will make us feel secured and doesn't have to worry about anything. And uh just to collect rents, right, in, on a monthly basis. Uh, but uh, that did not turn out to be the way we have expected it uh, because, uh, you know, it gets old. Uh, uh, answering from uh, tenants uh, complain about uh, toilets being plugged, uh, leaky, all kinds of this shower, you know, faucets coming down from second floor to the first floor. And then uh, we, you know, we had as a, as a, as a land as a, as a owner of rentals, as a landlord, you know, every time they move, you have to rehab them, right? And make sure you market it and then have to deal with HOA. And so it's, it becomes so uh, burdensome. It causes a lot of uh, stress between me and my wife. And, you know, at the time I was still in the U.S. Navy. So it, it was tough. It was tough. And then what really broke the camel's back, per se, between me and Lira, 
my wife uh, was, uh, because it also broke our heart, was when we had to evict one of our good tenants. And I'm not gonna name, I'm not gonna name his name because he became a good friend. So what happened was he, you know, you do your due diligence as a, as a landlord who will rent your rentals. And, um, but he lost his job. His wife left him and he was left with a three year old son. And uh, and he has not been paying for six months, so it's draining our uh, our savings. And uh, so, but we, so we had to evict him. So the sheriff told us, "Do you want to be there to put a padlock on the door?" I said, "No, I don't want to see him." And his son locked out of the house. His three-year-old son with no place to go. So I said, "Nope, I don't want to deal with this." And it's such you know, it's such a problem. Uh, dra again, draining us, you know, emotionally, mentally, uh, financially. But those can you, you can recover. But the time away from my wife and my kids managing this property, it, it, it took a, so much burden on us. So on that that side of the rental properties, but you know, uh, day trading. I said I, I did day trading. Of course, day trading you got to put some money in it. I got good at it because right? I'm really a numbers guy, as I shared with you, Marcella. I'm some mechanical engineer. I'm fascinated with numbers, and I like to see progression, see that I can, you know, uh, predict and, and hopefully project it. But it wasn't for me either. Day trading was tough. You know, you have to do your due diligence and uh, in preparing for, you know, what, what, what trade you're going to put in the day before. You got to read the news. You know, you have to do what what the MT, MTA or LIBOR index are doing. It's so much stress. It costs, a, a, you know, a, a big gap between me and my wife because I have to focus on it. I'm driven. I want to make sure my family is provided and my my male children will have good education. And so, uh, but I lost a lot of money in one day, Marcel. I lost about, I got good at it. I did for a couple of years. I lost about $25,000 in one day. Just like that, because I thought, oh, I can recover. Oh, not really, right? Oh, I'm going to make more money. And suddenly they drop you. They'll drop you. They know who you are. So, uh, you know, I, I didn't do it myself. I went to Online Trading Academy. I, I, I paid a lot of money for it to be trained by the best of the best by New York Stock Exchange, uh, you know, hedge funds manager. But it wasn't for me. So those are actually the main two things that I did. And um uh, you know, I did I became also a loan officer and, and, and a realtor as well. So, but that, that that did not work for me as well. It was tough. I thought it's 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 like uh, a golden egg for us, right? So, so that's how that's my uh, how it was working for me, for my investments. Wow, wow. There there's so much to unpack there. So many lessons learned. Yeah. And, the crazy thing is, Ray, I've heard these similar types of stories over and over and over again. Uh -huh. People keep going to what everyone else talks about, right? Rentals, that's the way to go. Get cash flow until yeah. you have to spend all kinds of money fixing it up, or you have to evict your friend who literally lost their job. I mean, that's uh, heartbreaking. Yeah, it yeah, it was. It was. To think about it now, it's just like, oh my goodness, I lost a friend. And had to evict him. I can't blame him. He doesn't want to talk to me anymore, you know? Uh, so money is not everything, you know? It's, a, it's a, But that that was my experience. <laughs> wow, that's really tough. And yeah. then was all that prior to 2008? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it was uh, 2008. So, uh, yeah, 2008 was just kind of like today, right? COVID, there was a lot of insecurity for us and... Uh, and uh, uncertainty, anxiety, especially on the, on, um, on the side of my wife and, uh, you know, our children at that time, even though they didn't understand at that time, but it's very, very similar uh, of what happened. But I'm glad I don't have to worry about that now <laughs> because of where I am at and, and doing what I love doing now in land banking. So, so you were a mortgage officer, realtor, and then what took you to land banking? How how did you uh, find it? Oh, you know, it's a it's a it's a good question. So, 
you know, uh, before I get there, if you if you don't mind, I uh, so I'm gonna try to remember that on what took me and how it got me to land banking. Because of uh, really, let me answer the, the why of why we did land banking. Um, because of our, I mentioned to you about special needs daughter, Andrea. The reason why special needs daughter, because she she now is have, suffering from cerebral palsy. Uh, so having grand mal seizures from time to time and has 80 to 90% blindness on, on her eyes and, and wondering, why is she now the way she is and asking her mom mom why am i like this why am i not like the rest of the kids uh that is going on uh, you know because she could barely walk and she could see her hand one of her hands kind of like we were like this and only left hand is uh is, is really functional she's kind of functional so what happened with andrea uh, marcella was that uh, she was um she was born normal from conception until Lyra, uh, you know, delivered her in uh, one of the hospitals in, in New Jersey. Uh, Lyra being an, an RN, an emergency uh, nurse as well, giving birth to Andrea at that time, you know, the umbilical cord tied around her neck. They found out that the umbilical tied around her neck. And Lyra being a nurse, again, is her eyes being a nurse, uh, and, and having her own baby, Andrea, was focused, her eyes was focused on the heartbeat of the baby. So she noticed that the baby's heart, heartbeat was going down from 140 to 130, 120, meaning it was rapidly going down. So each time that it grows, it, it drops down dramatically, she keeps uh, getting the, the, the attention of the medical staff at the New Jersey hospital several times, according to her and apparently was uh, ignored until she passed out because she was trying to deliver a baby. She was saying, telling them, come on, I'm authorizing you to do a C-section. My baby's heartbeat is dropping down fast. So imagine she was so upset and, but, and, and still and, and tired at the same time. And then of course, uh, in the fast forward, she gave birth. And then when she woke up as a good mom, she was looking for a baby. And what, you know what they told her? They told her, Lyra, uh, we're very sorry you cannot see your baby for a while. What do you mean for a while? So she started, started panicking as a mother. You know, so she explained, they explained to her, well, you, we almost lost your baby. And, and that's why she had to be flown to New York Hospital to make sure she's alive uh, and come to normal. Her heartbeat will come to normal. And then uh, she will be observed uh, for many days to make sure she will be fine. So imagine the, the 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 agony, the pain, the you know the fear that was going on in the heart of, of Lear as a mother. This is her you know baby, and yeah, sure you know we we had some set, we have settlement for that, but is was it really worth it? You cannot change that anymore. So she will be with us for you know for life. So you know the 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 medic the, the remuneration settlement that we got for that wasn't worth it. So we, we had to be a good steward of what Andrea got from the medical malpractice. Uh, and, and so one of the reasons why is we, are, we got into land banking is we want to find, uh, a, at that time we didn't know what, what land banking is all about, right? We, we had to make sure that Andrea's taking care of uh, had she outlive us along with her other six siblings, but I'm not worried about that uh, for now. Uh, but at that time, when there was, still, you know, uh, I was worried about because they're still growing, and that's why we got into different uh, types of investments. And uh, and then, you know, and come 2008, you know, uh, the market crash is like we had in COVID-19. So before then, you know, with 2008, we were praying and looking for a solution that will make us feel secure that will my that my family will have a legacy that we don't have to worry about andrea and but you know we lost a lot of money we lost uh our summer rentals and you know we have to do loan modifications and i have to do all kinds of businesses to keep ourselves afloat and to recover you know what uh, uh what andrea's uh uh, market performance, uh, even though we hired one of the very finest financial planners. What can but what can you do? You know, the market tank 
and uh, and all we had to do is, is wait. But still, waiting is so it's so you know it causes so much insecurity. So we want we're looking for investment that is secure, you know, meaning we won't lose it, or and, and then still growing in value for years and years. We tried so many many things and this problem looming in our heads and so what if what now right what then and then uh, so that, so that's the why really is for for land banking and why land banking uh, uh, I'm sorry but why ha the reason why we got into land banking is uh, primarily for Andrea legacy and of course to make sure that our retirement is secured right because we put our heart and and, and funds on it so um, and, and so how did we get into land banking well after praying and looking for years and years, trying everything, losing time, money, resources, and a distance away from the family because, you know, we're trying everything you can, like I said. And uh, one, one time, my wife uh, went to a nursing convention, and uh, she met a very you know, fine lady at the time. I think she was already in her late late 70s or, or mid-70s, mid uh, married to a um, a doctor, a surgeon, so she's an RN and and, and and a surgeon. So, and Leah was so excited about it. Say, Han, you know, I think we found what the I think God has answered our prayer that this this seems to be a divine appointment that I met Maggie, and we did not know her. We had no relationship with her, and she was going through the same problem, uh, you know, because in nursing, I think you you share each other's problem, and then. So what uh, Maggie went through and Lyra went was going through at that time, what we were going through at that time was very, very much similar. And so my wife came back after a few days excited and asking me to just take a look at it, uh, what, uh, what the experience of Maggie. <laughs> but you know what, Marcella, I'm so, so happy that I met Maggie. Now we almost, she's now almost a, a relative. So uh, we call her now Tita Maggie <laughs> because she was like an angel, you know, God, God sent to us and showed us uh, land banking and uh, it, it's really is working for us. So now get, getting into this, we are we feel much secured because we dove into it uh, and uh, we did over and over again and very happy that we did land banking together mm -hmm. as well with Auntie Maggie. Now Auntie Maggie is uh, retired. I call Auntie or Tita Maggie because she made money on it already. She doesn't need to work. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's happily retired. She's I think over 87 now or something like that. So even, so I was thinking at that time, you know, she also invested at the age of 70. She's still investing. So age really has no, you know, uh, it's not, it's not an excuse not to invest, not to diversify. Right. So uh, and she took the chance. I was thinking, why wouldn't I? Right. And then now fast forward, uh, Marcella, I'm I'm proud to say that I have 11 land of our own. Very much secure. And I'm glad we did it, Marcella, because COVID-19 hits. I don't have to worry about it. My wife don't we don't have to, to go elsewhere while we are asleep. Our land is making money for us. Right. I don't have to may pay so much property tax and I don't have to fix toilets, wake up early in the morning. Hi, ay, ay. <laughs> Worry about a news article coming out and your stocks losing all the money. Right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Not being able to pay rent, right? Right. Yeah. 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 That's right. I don't have to worry about that. Don't have to, you know, worry about evicting tenants and losing another friend and time away from the family. So I'm not sure I answered your question. I became so emotional that trying to to to, to share with you the what transpired in our lives. So just very happy about wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm I'm I have goosebumps from your story, and I even already knew your story, but just hearing it again, it is so powerful. Uh -huh. And what you know, the hard times that you and your family have gone through, and your daughter, you know, all that she's been through, and you your heart's in the right place. You want to be able to take care of her when you're no longer around, right? So yes. for you, land banking, it sounds like, is about legacy for yes. your kids, for your daughter, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well as retirement for yourself. Correct. Correct, Marcel. And also one thing I did not mention, my wife and I love to travel. 
and also doing part of the medical mission because she's a nurse. And I love, we did that before, uh, but now we can we can do it again. You know, hopefully when the COVID nineteen uh, you know settles, and of course part of the anyway, we what we what, what I'm trying to say we we now we could we will be able to do what we would love to do part of medical mission, evangelical mission, helping fellow veterans like myself, and also being passionate about helping people that there, you know, that there is a solution to the problem, you know, and we just have to I. We just have to open up to opportunities, and you know, opportunity comes. And I always believe that opportunity is not lost; it is being given to others. So I'm glad I took the opportunity of going into land banking. So Absolutely. yeah, we grabbed that opportunity. And you didn't let fear hold you back. That's what I see holds most people back from trying something different, trying something new like land banking. Yeah. It's their own personal fear. Yes. You know, what if, you know, mm -hmm. and I think knowledge is powerful to overcome that fear. And really, all people need to do is get on one of our land banking webinars and learn yes. about it. I mean, I think that's what did it for you, right? Yes, that's how it did it for me. I actually, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, what's presented to me, we bought land. And then what I love is uh, what we do is uh we, now I'm part of uh, the Lure Land Banking is because we are, we're getting updated the webinar, you know, uh, about it, it pretty much, you know, it's like in the, in the military, don't leave anyone behind. We, one of the, you know, uh, good characteristics of business model of the Lure Land Banking is they keep you informed, the most up-to-date information. So again, because I love number, I, I like what I can project, you know, it's not guessing game. The guesswork has been done for me, right? All I have to do is just put my investment. Okay, where do I invest? It's funny when my wife started investing in it. I, she, she was holding me back. You know, I <laughs> said, I told, oh, that's okay. You know, use our, use our investment. Use our four hundred one k IRA. They're not growing anyway, right? So just, just anywhere there, just get land. <laughs> it's well studied. You know, eliminates the guesswork. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a good point that you just brought up. So you used your old 401k to invest in Oh, land? yeah. Oh, yeah. About 80 percent of our investments. You know, as you know, Marcella, you know, 401k and IRA. We use both 401k and IRA because we have uh, both of them. Uh, it, it doesn't grow as much unless you put more into it. Right. And, and that's that's why I am so glad that we did it. And uh, you probably seen my uh, my one of my properties there that we used the two hundred eighty thousand, the mixed shoes, you know, I pulled out the comps on it. It's just, you know, a year after I I I bought it, other than the comps, I got an offer two hundred eighty thousand. I got an offer for a million. How can you beat that? A year after, I said, nope. <laughs> The, my, my cow is still giving milk and it will continue to grow, you know, so you're going <laughs> to give me more milk. So I, I love it. That's just one of them. They pulled the comps. It's what, much more than that. Much more than that. It's now pretty much surrounded with more developments than when I bought it since 2014. Very happy. And that's just one of them. I have 11 of them. So, you know, <laughs> think of the security that it brings to me and my wife. So again, this COVID-19 doesn't affect us as much. No. And actually, because of COVID-19, things are even speeding up the consumption of land. Oh, my goodness, Marcella. I have a friend. Yeah, yeah, true. I have a friend that lives in uh, in, la in that area where we invested, right? And he's a contractor. He said, Ray, this, the, the, the developments around your property has not stopped. In fact, they have more time. They're building more. I said, okay. <laughs> Right. Yes, yes. Very happy. And now, and now the greatest land rush in California's history is happening there. Yes. And it's for an invest or an, it's for projects that people aren't even aware of. It's no. amazing. Yes. It is amazing. But we won't give it all away. No. To, I'd love to, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They need to get on one of the webinars and learn all about it. So much information to share. 
And wow, Ray, I'm just blown away by your story. And I, I just feel super grateful that you guys were able to find land banking and help achieve that financial independence and freedom that you've been looking for, for oh, you and your family. You guys deserve it. You've been through a lot and the future is very bright. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not, I don't think it's just a light at the end of the tunnel. I think it's a headlight or something like that. <laughs> it's like a spotlight at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> well, in reality, it's actually the sun at the end of that tunnel. That's right, right. <laughs> we're making money from the sun. I mean, there's yeah, everything. right. Now we're giving it away. So the, the greatest land rush. <laughs> Exactly. It's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Ray. Oh, I you. know. I mean, to be courageous and vulnerable to share some of the hard times you guys have been through and what your family has gone through. Yes. Um, we really appreciate it. And we hope that we're able to help other people take advantage of this opportunity. It's not going to be around forever, right? I mean, we were just on a webinar last week, and they were just saying it's running out very, very quickly. <laughs> yes, yes. And people have yet to find out why it's running real fast, better, you know, sooner than what people are thinking. Exactly. So before it's too late, I, I highly encourage. That's why I'm in a mission. I'm in a mission to help people, get, you know, uh, achieve what I have achieved and have that and, and have that uh, sun at the end of the tunnel <laughs> uh, in, in their investments. Ah, uh, that's beautiful. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Do you have any last words to share, Ray, before we end the broadcast today? You know, I, uh, I really, I first of all, I thank God for the opportunity that has given me. He does answer to me. He does answer prayer, and uh, he brought uh, Belour Company in our life. It it really is a family. You know, I love being part of the community, part of mentored before in the past as well, and you and Rick actually been the greatest part of, of my life and you guys are one of the greatest people I've ever known you know <laughs> this is like a go-getter and it's like a numbers people and most importantly do you love people we 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 have the same passion of helping people so thank you thank you to you and again to uh to Valor and its staff That's all. and it's it's great to have you on my team Ray and we look forward to helping your investors create wealth through land. By the way, they're not making any more of it. So that's today right. is tomorrow's gold, right? Yay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> awesome, Ray. Have a wonderful awesome. day. And thank you to everyone out there in cyberspace for watching this video and hearing Ray's very powerful story. Have a great day. Spread the love, spread the joy, everyone. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.